uh, while we see positivity rate in the state of California uh, growing modestly. We're seeing the total number of cases certainly growing, a number of people losing their lives, and I'll talk about that in a moment, also growing. It's not happening evenly in every part of the state. There are certain parts of the state, certain regions in the state, and certain, certain sectors of our economy that are disproportionately impacted uh, by the transmission of this virus. Uh, we're here talking today about the Central Valley. Eight counties that have our effective rates, Dr. Galley will remind you what our effective is uh, in a moment when he speaks. Our effective rates north of 1%. Uh, we have eight counties where we're seeing an increase of infections. Uh, we have positivity rates in the Central Valley on the low end of 10.7% in Fresno, Tulare, and Stanislaus. On the higher end, 17.7% positivity rates. Uh, so you get a sense of the challenge we have in the eight counties making up the Central Valley disproportionately being impacted currently by community spread and by spread uh, happening disproportionately with essential workers, disproportionately in the Latino community, disproportionately impacting congregate settings, uh, continuing to be vigilant around skilled nursing facilities, correctional facilities, and the like. That's the area of more of our laser-like focus in terms of our targeted interventions, in terms of our resource allocation, and in terms of our transparency and ultimately accountability to partner with organizations, both not only at the state level, local level, but also at the federal level to provide relief and diminish the spread and transmission of this virus. So today we're announcing $52 million investment, new dollars that will be put into the Central Valley, uh, into the eight counties to improve our isolation protocols, our quarantine protocols, our testing protocols, uh, and to enhance our health care workers uh, by providing more support uh, as well as more personnel. $52 million that has been provided to us through a grant we received from the federal government, $400 a $99 million CDC grant, of which the first dollars we're now distributing, 52 again in eight Central Valley counties, focusing and targeting on improving testing, not only providing more supplies and supports, but time to testing results. And you'll hear uh, a moment uh, more from one of our co-chairs of our testing task force to talk more specifically about some of our renewed efforts in this space. But these dollars uh, we think are timely. These dollars certainly are critical and important, and they will build off local infrastructure that's already in place. What's also in place, deeply ingrained in our mindset, is the example of what occurred in Imperial County and the work we've been doing in Imperial County now for a number of months to address some of the community spread that really flared up there disproportionately. Uh, in that county. Uh, we were able uh, to make some improvements in terms of the transmission and spread of the virus by deploying a number of strike teams. Uh, you may recall these regional unified response teams that we deployed into Imperial County. We're announcing today we're doing exactly the same thing throughout the Central Valley. Three teams representing three different regions in the Central Valley will be deployed along the same lines we deployed those teams in Imperial County. I'll remind you those teams included members of the Office of Emergency Services, certainly members of OSHA, uh, team members, Department of Social Services, uh, as well as partners that we developed at the local level, including uh, community-based organizations uh, that will be helping us and supporting our efforts to truly unify our engagement, truly unify our approach uh, and framework uh, to mitigate the spread of this disease. We've also created at the State Operations Center what we refer to as the SOC, uh, a new Central Valley Task Force exclusively focused uh, on the needs of the task force, or rather the needs of the valley, that task force focusing on this unified, coordinated response 
and focusing on accountability, again, transparency at all levels of government. And so with the new supports, $52 million of new resources we're deploying, uh, with the strike teams, uh, which will be deployed uh, in every one of the eight Central Valley counties, uh, with the renewed vigor of what we announced on Friday related to supporting our essential workforce, disproportionately engaging our employers, uh, not in a punitive mindset, uh, but a supportive mindset. Uh, the work we're doing in terms of increasing uh, the acuity of focus related to uh, identifying and isolating and quarantine individuals that may have either tested positive for COVID-19 or have been in an environment uh, where someone was a close contact uh, had been tested positive for COVID-19, that through the additional efforts uh, with our partnerships that we are establishing, uh, we announced Friday, including Project Room Key, which is being enhanced uh, to provide isolation space uh, and additional supports in terms of housing vouchers, primarily hotel vouchers uh, that were supplementing and increased education, more targeted engagement uh, to not only employers, but to employees, so that they know their rights in relationship uh, to sick leave and in relationship to workers' comp. Uh, we think uh, we are in a better position uh, this week in terms of these efforts. We are in the midst of the first wave of this pandemic, uh, and we have got to do what we did in the beginning and the outset of this pandemic, and that is mitigate the spread, uh, and we will, and we will do that much sooner if all of us maintain that vigilance uh, and don't let our guard down, human though all of us are. And so again, I say this with absolute admiration and respect uh, for uh, everything we're all going through, many of you are going through at this moment. As the governor mentioned, the hospital beds as well as the ICUs and the 45 hospitals in the eight counties here in the Central Valley um, are feeling the pressure. Some of the regular hospital beds that we depend on for everyday care are filled up with COVID patients to the rate of 65%. Same thing in the ICU beds. Some of the smaller hospitals, their ICUs, small and mighty and important to the community. Some of those 65% of the patients today in those beds are COVID positive. So what that tells us is the moment is now to continue to work between the state and our local partners to get a handle on what's happening in the Central Valley. The unified response teams that the governor mentioned, led by Cal OES out of the State Operations Center, multidisciplinary teams across many state agencies that are putting sort of our, our feet uh, where our mouth has been. Right, coming into communities, partnering with individuals like Dr. Park in her county and city colleagues to make sure that we're addressing everything, not just hospital surge capacity and whether we have enough staff and ventilators, but also way upstream, getting into places like Diamond where we are today, where we know essential workers are, um, are part of the story of transmission, that we need to do more working with our labor partners here uh, in the Central Valley, working with uh, community leaders, all the way faith-based leaders, community groups, um, a number of the city and other uh, local leaders as well to make sure that our message around wear your mask, stay physically distanced and reduce the level of mixing that we're seeing in our communities so we can get transmission rates out, down and really keep our communities protected over the long run that even though Latinos make up a certain portion of the population in each of the Central Valley counties, they make up a greater proportion, sometimes you know, 20, 30% greater proportion, not just in the number of cases, not just in the number of patients in the hospital, but also in the number of deaths. So making sure that we're communicating clearly and concisely around messages that can reduce transmission, as well as ensuring that testing is in high quality and high amount within the Central Valley.